All right, let's get this party started. Um, my collection of florals and near florals is so vast that we have to take another bite at it today. Okay, let's see what, what we got and see what kind of perfumes can really make the cut because my dream is to buy and assemble a new, a new shelf for my perfumes and I only want to put the bottles that I truly, truly, I'm sure I want to keep there. Let's start from Mono Duoro since it's the first one and it's kind of a really cool looking package. This is an oldie. I got it second hand. This is a set of perfumes. All the same. This is a Holland Rose by Mono Duoro. They since repackaged and kind of changed the way that and actually reformulated some of the fragrances. So if you're a really big fan of old school, deep, complex, kind of French style of blending niche perfumes, uh, tr try to find some of the older formulations of Mon Dior, you won't be disappointed. I bought most of mine, well, most all of mine, blindly, because there's no place I can really try them. And let me tell you, that is a, an olfactory experience. So yeah, uh, one is in, my, um, is in my purse, and two other ones are basically backups. The Holland Rose by Mono Diorio definitely stays very hard to find stuff and rather pricey. Okay, to the right. To, to the right we're gonna put everything that I keep. Next is a rather uh, budget-friendly perfume. This is Eisenberg, Jose Eisenberg, if you can see it here. Wait, the name of the brand. Jose Eisenberg, uh, Love Affair. A beautiful, let me remind myself, a beautiful, slightly fougere floral. Um, in Europe it costs, I think, around 50 bucks. Amazing perfumes for their price. And what I like about them, even though it's sort of like mainstream, almost affordable pricing, the formulations are rather on the level of Mm, boutique lines of designer fragrances. So they are always very wearable, but they always have that something a little special, something a little extra, while still maintaining a rather user-friendly olfactory profile. Love it. I'm gonna keep it. This is La Dendi by D'Orsay. I don't know what's happening with the house of D'Orsay because it seems that you can either find them for rather affordable prices, like second-hand or online discount stores, or you can't find them at all. So possibly discontinued, I don't know, maybe the brand is changing hands. If you know anything, please leave a comment below. I'm kind of interested to know what's happening with them. Uh, La Dendi, love it, stays. Rose Privé by L'Artisan Parfumé, Rose and Basilic that stays, I love this one. Half Moon by Atelier Bohème, finally, finally got it. The one that got away from me and keeps getting away from me is the mm, Tulip. Extraordinary Tulip by the same brand, Atelier Bohème. I keep trying to find it and the only thing I can find so far is just repurchasing decant over decant on Sandbird. So far getting the full bottle for a reasonable price was, is not an option. So I'm really happy I got this Jasmine by Atelier Bloom. Very ethereal, light, super wearable. Kind of like Jo Malone, but I would say 10, 10 times better. Uh, Donna Karen Gold Eau de Parfum. A very um, green, zesty, kind of zombie type of lily. Um, not the easiest to wear, but I like it, so I'm gonna keep working on it. This is a sampler that I got of a very expensive perfume, which is Bottega Veneta, their um, boutique line, exclusive line, Parco Palladiano. This is Para, which is Pear. I already used up two uh, vials, which is each of them is four milliliters. I'm super happy to swap this for another like um, boutique or niche decant, if you guys are interested. It's one of the most realistic pears with a little bit of kind of hay facet to it. It's, it's really great stuff. It's just <laughs> crazy expensive if you want to buy a full size bottle. So this is the one that I have. I will keep definitely a few, but I'm also happy to swap a few. Les Le Sauvage by L'Artisan Parfumeur. A very creamy makeup y type, type of carnation. Love it. You can also get yourself a decant from this bottle. Split it with me. All the links will be uh, down below if you're interested. Oh, here we go. Hi. Um, 
this is Oscar de la Renta Gold. Um, sweet caramel like I guess if you if you enjoy La Via Belle, Poison Girl, uh, I guess Black Opium, you might be interested in this. I think I've been kind of just I just enjoy the bottle a lot, but it's not really my olfactory profile. It's too syrupy for my liking. A animalic, musky, very skin-like lily with a tinge of spices is Sharon by Tatle Bergerange. I recently got it, so I want to give it a really good, good test drive. Halston Classic. This is an animalic shipper. Obviously, it reformulated, cheapened quite a bit since its original inception, but the bottle it's kind of like a contemporary work of art. It's very sculptural. Um, I do have a fair share of affordable shippers, but I have the ones that I prefer more than this one. This is a bit too animalic for me. I guess this is for people who prefer the French school of perfumery. You might be interested in giving this a go. So this is up for a swap or a sale. Out Voltage which is a testament to metallic pomegranate. I do feel rather metallic apples in here and in the discussion with some of you in the under the video about the tale of three apples, we, we got into like nitty-gritty details of what apples and other accords other fruits can smell like. So yeah, apparently pomegranate and apples do share a lot in common, which I'm very happy to report. Love it. But if you're curious, you can get a decant from this bottle. Uh, if you kind of want to try something like that. Ofrisia by Diptyque. I also intend to split the bottle with you guys if you're interested. I'm not sure if I already posted it on eBay or, on, or Facebook page. If I didn't, please just ping me. Um, I'm gonna be keeping it, but this is a large bottle, so I'm happy to split it. This is Lalique by Lalique, the perfume that is like sweet pears, somewhat reminiscent of Coco Mademoiselle. Love it, get a lot of compliments on it. Another Lalique, which is Nilong, a very, very sweet white floral. Haven't really, I haven't worn it enough to make an opinion yet, so I'm gonna keep it. It was a swap. Uh, cheap and Chic by Moschino, kind of a like cruel floral. It has a bit of a sharp edge, unapologetically synthetic DNA that the, the Moschino fragrances have, but I do enjoy wearing it, so I'm keeping it. Histoire d'Amour number two. Oh, this is, first of all, beautiful, even though very affordable packaging. But what's really weird about it, that is a, imagine a watermelon with sweet cotton candy and powdery notes. This is so bizarre. In terms of the combination, I could easily imagine a niche house uh, playing with notes like that, kind of just for the shock value, for like the experimentary mm, appeal. I think I'm willing to part with it, but if nobody wants to, to get it or swap it with me, I'll probably keep trying to wear it because this is kind of interesting. Um, it's got a joyful, love it. This is a very wearable type of apple, uh, though I do prefer the niche version of, of in my apples, but this is also pretty good stuff. Um, I, would, I would probably swap it for something new just for the sake of novelty factor, but if nobody ends up picking it up, I'll, I'll keep using it. And Halligan's Lily of the Valley, uh, basically what Diarissimo used to be before reformulation. Love it, keep it. You can get a decant if you want to. Passage d'un Fur uh, by L'Artisan Parfumer. A very light, musky lily with a bit of, a, again, very light ethereal incense in it. Uh, I'm gonna keep it, though... Mmm... This is the collector in me. I don't really wear it. You can get a decant if you want to from my page. I kind of like the collector in me wants to keep it because I have a large collection of L'Artisan Parfumeur, but I don't really wear it. Mm. Okay, for now I'm gonna put it in the decluttered category, ready for swap or sale. 
and if nobody gets it then I'll just keep kind of uh, offering the decants okay this is a tester make me fly by Kenzo this is kind of like powdery sweet um, perfume uh, it's a bit boring to me it's fun the bottle is beautiful it's one of those things just like Joe Malone like you know you just put it on without thinking and it's pleasant enough it's just it's not offensive to anyone it's not too sweet it's not too heavy it's not too floral either uh, it's just boring to me so I'm I would I would love to find a second home for it another one that I got for the sake of my memory I used it a long time ago this is Elizabeth Arden Mediterranean beautiful bottle the color is just mesmerizing this the scent itself again to me Maybe I'm just getting spoiled with niche fragrances. I'm kind of bored a little bit. But again, if you've been buying a lot of Jo Malone and you don't know about the older kind of older designer market classics like this, you are missing out because like I dare, I dare somebody in the blind testing um, to to say that this is not very much like a lot of lighter florals by Jo Malone. So I would, I would be happy to swap it for something else because I already tried it, I'm not in love with it anymore, I'm, I'm ready to move on. Uh, Gucci, Memoir en deux, the, mem the memory of one day. I'm in love with the idea of this dry chamomile, theoretically, but I don't really wear it. Nevertheless, I'm gonna, I will keep working on it and kind of trying to force myself to a more prominent decision. I'm gonna keep that. In Harlequin's the star the most believable, beautiful daffodil scent on the market to date, still not beaten by anyone else. Keep it. Relatively new jasmine in my collection by Molinar. Uh, I got it second hand, almost half full. Uh, this is the most indolic type of jasmine that I have in my collection. It's relatively new, so I'm definitely keeping that. Mon Guerlain, Bloom of Rose. Oh, I'm not a big fan of Mon Guerlain line, so that's up for grabs. Miller Harris, L'Air du Rien. Um, this is a decan that Bella sent me from New York. I tried it, satisfied my curiosity, not in love with it. If anybody wants to swap it for something else, I'm more than happy to. Another swap, Elizabeth Arden uh, Nirvana Rose, not my kind of rose, this is very sour, very Bulgarian rose type of thing, it's very musky. Mm, for those who love Bulgarian rose oil, will love this. I don't, so that, sh that hopefully will find a second home. Hortense, Hortense by Rancé, love it, very flirtatious, semi-sweet, kind of very kind of pink thrills type of um, fragrance, love it. And you can also get a decant of that if you want to. Uh, let induce the linden. Uh, to many people this uh, smells a lot like very light honey because honey is often produced from the linden flowers. L'Artisan Parfumier, love it, love it, love it. I think I'm splitting the bottle online. If I haven't posted it yet, just let me know. Um, this is Brokar, which is basically Russian Malone. They do produce a lot of those kind of exotic herbal and floral scents that um, are harder to find around. This is a, a more kind of mainstream combination. This is Tulip and Mimosa. Beautiful. Um, I wear it on myself a lot, especially in the spring. I think I already showed this before, but that clearly stays a very hard to find flanker Kalesho Delicat. Beautiful memories that I have with it from my 20s. These two, basically a bunch of florals from Oscar de la Renta. I thought I would get to them and actually wear them. The blue, I forget this is blue orchid, kind of fun springy floral. They kind of look cute on the vanity, but I don't really care for it. So that is up for grabs. This is rose. Uh, just, I don't know. I just, I'm just not a lost curiosity for it, I guess. So that's up for grabs as well. Fleur de Rakai by Caron, a historic French boutique. With 
unapologetically vintage profiling very hard for me to wear this is the kind of vintage that you have to love vintage in order to truly appreciate what this represents I bought myself a tester and think I worn it three times and every time it's just it's just not me it's not me it's for somebody who who, who likes that kind of stuff um, yeah this is upper grubs Emmy Road by Coty Shelly Mar for for the working class as, as they used to call it um, citruses bright semi-synthetic citruses with vanilla not near really vanilla like it's kind of synthetic vanillin type of accord it's fun it actually works really well as a room spray i don't really wear it as a perfume uh if you kind of would like to dive into the what the american memories uh weaved off olfactory memories um this is something that i'm more than willing to swap with something else alaya the original lie also a result of a swap beautiful bottle somewhat a confusing scent for me i'm not in love with it i would be open to swapping it but if nobody wants it i think i will just give it another test run but so far not my cup of tea though the bottle is beautiful absolutely beautiful vitriol Dulet is a my favorite carnation scent by serge lutens keeping that here we have Mimosa Paul Moi. Moi. Very creamy makeup in Mimosa by, uh, by L'Artisan Parfumeur. Also splitting the bottle online. If you want a decant, very hard to find. Rather, sometimes three times as expensive as many other L'Artisan Parfumeur fragrances because it kind of has a bit of a cult status. A lot of people say this is the best niche Mimosa on the market. I do like it, but I disagree with the title. I, I think it's a very truly interesting cool mimosa if you like makeup -y, creamy lotiony type of scents but is it the best mimosa i think i'm i'm still searching for the best mimosa i guess that's what i'm saying i'm on the lookout for the most believable grabby kind of in the way zesty yet powdery mimosa scent if you know any please let me know in the comments below this i'm keeping but i'm splitting the bottle with you guys if you if you want to buy a decant and support my channel this is cabochar eau de parfum a newly repackaged form beautiful packaging and if you look it up online you'll discover that it costs nothing it's a a bit of a cruel a bit bitchy kind of leathery shipper uh 100% unisex. I am I'm still waiting for the proper mood to wear it to be honest. I sampled it, I tested it, I appreciate the uniqueness of it and the historic significance but um, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it but I need to make a mental note to wear it more. Metal Shipper by Juliette has a gun, a very recent purchase of mine. I've been lasting over uh, after it for probably over a year keeping that uh, Prada Amber let me tell you one of the most unique and memorable designs of a bottle really cool stuff very hard luxury uh, rather affordable now in price uh, I'm open to swap it somehow just I didn't like it when I was younger and I got it just to kind of refresh my memory. It's still not my cup of tea. This type of resinous patchouli like umber. I think it's it's just it deserves to be loved by someone who will appreciate its complexity and kind of timeless elegance. Okay, so this is going to be decluttered. Waiting for somebody to pick it up. A affordable sweet peachy type of shipper by Ted Lepidus Roomba. Um, I do like it, but I don't love it. I, I kind of like, like the idea of it rather than the fragrance itself. So I think I will declutter it in favor of Knowing by Estee Lauder, which I picked up very, very recently. Basically, like in the, at the end of, I think, what was it, October or November of 2020? And this is the kind of peachy shipper that I do prefer. This is sweeter. This is a little bit less sweet, but I just I just like the, the blending here more than here. I guess if you're on the side of liking more fruity shippers, probably Roomba might be your pick. 
like a first pick but for me knowing of Estee Lauder actually I don't know I just it fits me better so Roomba hopefully somebody will want it knowing stays Klima by Lancome I made myself a decant as you can see I used up maybe four mil it's, it's fine it's another spicy shipper uh, again I got it for the historic value I wanted kind of to revisit what our mothers were uh, were using when they were young mm, it's obviously have been reformulated like a thousand times since then it's fine if you like kind of greeny powdery shippers you might enjoy it I'm just I don't quite care for it enough so I would be more than willing to let it go Oh, I don't know how I got so many shippers just in one year. Creation by Ted Lapidus. Um, I'm a little bit confused by these tuberose here. I cannot wear tuberose, it gives me headaches. But I'm, I, will, I will give it a shot. I will give it another chance. So I'll, Creation by Ted Lapidus stays. My One of my top favorite shippers of all time is uh, Ubican Apersu. Um, I think Ubigan is has discontinued it, but you can find it in uh, from like second hands and discount stores if you look for it. So that definitely stays. Noir Patchouli, a fairly recent purchase by Histoire de Parfums. Cool, smoky, oily kind of patchouli, truly noir. It has coriander, cardamom, you can see like sort of the the notes here, but it's a bit too much patchouli and too much smoke oiliness for me. Um, it's a hippie hug, basically, in a bottle. <laughs> it's a, it's for true hippies, for those of for those of you who who miss the 70s and the 60s. Um, I think I would be open to swapping it. This is a, probably the first Histoire de Parfums that I'm not sure I can really pull off. Though I wore quite quite a bit of it I mean considering the size of my collection it's just I can't see you know like I just I just want to use other perfumes more than it this is painful this is the mo one of the most beautiful bottles in my collection the blue glass with super shiny gold Juliet has a gone luxury collection liquid illusion this is a kind of lychee fruity musk I just don't like musks by Juliet Has a Gun. This is it. If you like Juliet, how Juliet Has a Gun do their perfumes in general, this probably is going to be the crown of your collection. This is a very sophisticated type of fragrance with their signature musky DNA. It's just not me again like the way that they do musks does not agree with my skin, but I am in love with this bottle. So, I would I'm open to swapping it or selling it for, for the right person for the right you know for the right circumstances but if nobody wants it I won't be upset I'll just keep it for the fetish sake of the bottle itself and another one that I swapped uh, moon dance from the same collection beautiful I don't know I love this packaging I just find that this packaging is so stylish so smooth so polished but the truth is they're all to me sour and if here I can kind of tolerate it through the copper notes these two I these kind of z sour zestiness of the musks drives me nuts here it has some mineral patchouli quality with tuberose another another reason why I love how they look but I can't quite wear them so uh, this this is painful okay to the right person <laughs> in the right circumstance I, I'll, I'll let it go I'll put it aside and try to find a second home for it Safari by Ralph Lauren kind of the allusion to the the hot sand the desert sand but to me this is mostly dusty patchouli Type of scent the patchouli here is on the background it's kind of like a somewhat dump dusty perfume a cult favorite because it's discontinued it's not super expensive but sometimes it's hard to find I bought it again because it's so rare and I enjoy what, what 
like the kind of crafting of the bottle. The lid is kind of cheap though. When it comes to herbaceous bitter powder, I rather prefer Matahari 1876. And when I want like really vintagey kind of dry herbal florals, almost a shipper but not a shipper, I would go for Lure Blue Eau de Parfum. So Ralph Lauren is waiting for its second home. If you're into rarities and, you know, um, cult classics, this might be for you. And these two I'll keep. Another shipper. Gosh, I've overshopped shippers for sure this year. I, I got way too many. Um, Mystery by Nova Zerbea. I don't know how to say it in English, actually. It's a, it's a Russian historic brand. It's completely disgusting packaging to be honest not much to tell you about but it's really neon like bright yellow patchouli I love them they are very very kind of pungent another shipper um, bestseller I think was it in the 80s maybe uh, Eau de Parfum Coriander by Jean, Jean, Jean Couture um, to me this is like an affordable version of what Juliet has a gun does. So in a way, I would say they have a similar uh, um, similar style. I would say, and also with classics as well, such as I don't know, um, romant romantica, or romantina, charming. These kind of like grabby somewhat mineral, both light yet very long-lasting musky type of patchoulis in the base that are surrounded by other notes. So I, I, as I, as I told you before, not a big fan of zesty musky patchoulis. So I am more than willing to swap it for something else or, or sell it. And I guess let's make this one the last. Delamix Black by Salvador Dali. Super cool bottle. Kind of like one of those you just want to display somewhere. This is poisonous herbaceous liquor. Um, powerful, 100% unisex. Can go either way depending on what you prefer. Um, I at first was taken aback by how powerful it was and how much presence did it have it almost was intimidating to me and kind of like the almost absinthe like herbaceous bitterness of it was a bit scary but i must say i've been kind of sniffling and slippling and I'm, I'm warming up to this scent so i want to keep it uh, theoretically if somebody really really wants it i would be open for the right swap opportunity but otherwise i'm keeping it I am keeping 32 out of this huge bunch, which is a, a modest declutter, I would say, but let's actually count the ones that I'm giving away. The ones that are looking for the second home, two, four, let me pull them down so you can see them, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22. Well, it's actually not that bad. Okay. 22. Take a good look, guys. I am super relying on you to, to find me on the social media at Maria, sorry, Miliora.Maria. I'm, I'm, please help me, help me, help the dream come true. I really need to declutter and save up for the new shelf. That I, this, this shiny new shelf that I'm gonna buy where I'm gonna move my decluttered collection. I hope that you'll find something here that you would like to try. Please let me know if you do. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm ready 
to get going towards decluttering my heavier spicy perfumes gourmands leathery scents and all that kind of good stuff thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video please let me know if you have any questions recommendations if anything Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any questions, recommendations, if anything. Um, let me also show you a short clip of other perfumes that are still waiting to be picked up from the previous declutter parts. So just you have it all kind of like in one video. Here we are, can you believe it? So many bottles. If only I could really find a second home for them. Oh my God, I would be so happy. Okay, let's hope it happens. Let's make it happen together, guys. Thank you so much for watching again. I'll see you in the next video.